today we'll be talking about applications of conservation of energy. What I'm going to actually do is cover a couple problems with you. The first one's pretty simple. Um, we have a motorcycle that leaves a cliff at 38 meters per second. The cliff is 70 meters tall and it, and it falls onto another part of the jump which is 35 meters tall with some final velocity. And we're assuming that there's no air friction. All right, so if there's no air friction, we know that the final energy has to equal the initial energy. And the final energy consists of potential energy and kinetic energy, as well as the initial energy consists of potential and kinetic. And you notice that mass is in each term. Um, so we can divide through by mass and simplify the equation as shown. And it shouldn't be surprising that mass divides out because this should happen with any object regardless of how heavy it is. All right, so we have that equation and we're going to solve it for final velocity. All I did was take final um, velocity and I isolated it through algebra. And I put the numbers in. And the final velocity of the object would be 46.2 meters per second. All right, let's try another problem. Okay, we have a person starts from rest with a rope held horizontal in the horizontal position, swings downward, and then lets go of the rope. Three forces act on him. His weight, the tension of the rope, and the force of air resistance. Can the principle of conservation of energy be used in, to calculate his final speed? What do you think? Well, the forces that are acting on them, air resistance, we can pretty much ignore that because there's going to be very little air friction between here and here. So even if you did account for it, it would probably add very little error to it. Um, the tension of the rope, well, we don't have to worry about that because being the part of a circle, the tension is always acting at a 90 degree angle compared to the direction of motion. So look right here. And this is true at any part of this arc. Here's the speed going this way, and the tension's acting straight up. So it's acting at 90 degrees, so it hasn't, it's not doing any work to it. But what does do work to it is weight, which is a fancy way of saying we could take the potential energy up here and have it equal to the potential and kinetic energy down here. Okay? What I would do in this case is I would set this position equal to zero and this position equal to some height. With that done, the kinetic energy on top would be zero. The potential energy would be maximum. All that potential energy would be transferred into kinetic energy on the bottom. Okay, let's try another problem. In this case, we're going to have a non-conservative force. We're going to have to go back to our original idea of um, the work energy theorem, that the non-conservative forces are going to be equal to the final kinetic energy, and it's going to be the final energy minus the initial energy. So basically what we have is any of the, the um, added work that we added to the system or removed from the system would be equal to the final energy, which has potential and kinetic, minus the initial energy, which has potential and kinetic. In this case, we can't say that the final is equal to the initial because we're adding energy to the system. So the final is not going to be equal to the uh, initial. Okay, so now we're going to try this problem with some numbers in it. Okay, I'm going to say this rocket generates um, 425 joules of work. And that's being added to the system. Um, starts with a, a speed of zero, so it has zero kinetic energy initially. Starts at some height, h sub zero and it rises up 29 meters and at that point it has some final velocity and some final potential energy. All right, so here's our equation and in this equation we can um, simplify this somewhat or rewrite it. We can sit there and say that the potential energy final minus the potential energy initial which would be delta PE and we can say the kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial would be delta Ke 
So we can rewrite it this way. And we can expand that notation like this. Now in this case, are we able to uh, eliminate mass from every term? You might be thinking to yourself, yeah, yeah, that you can, but you really can't because you don't know, um, you would have to divide mass from every single term and you can't divide mass from this, okay? All right, so here's our equation again. And I'm rewriting it in a slightly different format here where I factored out the mg and I found out that it's um, h final minus h initial. And the kinetic energy initial is zero, so I eliminated it. So I just have pe delta pe plus ke would be equal to work non-conservative. Okay? And if I gave you a mass of like say 0.2 kilograms for the object, you would be able to figure out what this final kinetic, excuse me, what this final speed would be, All right? And after plugging in and solving some algebra, you would come up with a final speed of 61 meters per second. Now, why is this a non-conservative work energy theorem type of problem instead of conservation of energy just by itself? Well, think of it logically. If this rocket was in this holder, and it started at an initial velocity of zero. Unless you added energy to the system, it would never bother leaving the, the holder, right? 